Morning, y'all. I am uh, continuing to work on my junk journal pages that I pulled out of its previous home, which was an old phone book. I made these out of phone book pages. And they were just, it was kind of a weird, random book where I experimented with different stuff. And I loved it, but the spine was wonky. So I pulled out the pages and started kind of reworking them and thought I might come up with an idea to loose leaf bind them. And I did. So I will show you uh, the super simple way I'm going to do that and then the covers. This was a one of those smash book things. I got it at a thrift store for a dollar. And it had, you know, the pages and pockets and stuff inside, but I didn't like the colors, so I just pulled those out. And it's got the, it's a ring, ring binder deal. So this is, I knew this is what I wanted to use because it was just the right size for the pages. So what I did, I gessoed the whole thing front and back. It was sort of a craft color, and then it had a red uh, binding fabric on the spine. I just gessoed it all and then I painted some rice paper and I did some stencils. These are from a Colorful Life Designs. Um, just super simple kind of really finger paint and stencils and then I uh, traced around them with a drawing pen. And the inside pages I used some gel prints I think the background is a stencil from Joggles, and then this is a stencil from PM Artist Studios. So, I put all that in here, and I had taped this up. I left this here just to show you how I taped around the metal binder deal while I painted um, the inside. I wanted it to look really super finished and nice. So, yeah, I did the whole thing. We can pull this off now. This is just artist tape or like a masking tape. That was just so I wouldn't get paint all over the metal. There we go. So now it looks really finished and pretty, I think. I love this. And I want my pages in here. Y'all, these rings are small. These are not going to hold a whole lot. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we'll just see how far I can get. Because uh, the, the binding I've come up with, you know, that'll fit nicely. But my pages are really bulky. So they're going to they're gonna kind of splay out. And I really don't want this to be any wider than the spine. I don't want a big, huge thing. Because it's a hardback. And I'm just kind of... I prefer them to be tidy. I don't know why. So here's what I'm going to do, or what I've started doing. And I'm just taking each one of my loose pages, putting a little cardstock strip on it, and then three holes. And this probably has a name, and someone probably came up with this idea and called it something, and everybody but me knows what it is. I don't know. But yeah, this is what I'm doing anyway. It's kind of a no-brainer. You just need some kind of little tab on the edge of your pages that will work in your binder, like so. So, I'll show you a quick way to do that. I got a piece of, this is a piece of kind of dark purple eggplant cardstock. Here it is. I've been hoarding this for years. I mean years and years. I got it at Marco's Paper. Are they still a thing? I don't even know. I'll try to find out and give you a link if they're still around. They were super popular back in the rubber stamping days, and they may still be. I, yeah, I don't know. But this is called Nikusa Felt Weave Cover 80 pound cardstock in eggplant. So, you know, it's a good. A good weight, fairly stiff. I love the color. It kind of went with everything. So I cut it into two inch strips just 
along this way and that fit just right gave me a little you know it's a little bit shorter than these phone book pages were and that's fine so I cut a two inch strip scored it right down the middle so that I could fold it in half and then because I knew I was going to be doing quite a few of them I made me a template I really did I made here it is I made me a template out of a scrap of chipboard I just laid it down here like this and made lines where the rings were and then poked holes I came in just a little bit from the edge you can come in further if your um, cardstock is thinner you don't want it to pull through but I think this is going to be fine this is going to be far enough from the edge so that hopefully it won't pull through but then I just lay this with the holes closest to the folded edge like that and then punch you can use your your crocodile or whatever you've got this was just easiest for me today I'm trying not to repunch my template there we go so punch holes and then go to the next page I'll flip through this at the end so you can look at the pages I just want this here and I've been using some um, Fabri-Tac you can use if you don't have Fabri-Tac just use some kind of a thick like a tacky glue something that'll hold really good and uh, dries kind of fast okay and then I'm just gonna eyeball it kind of halfway the edge of my page halfway up the uh, edge of the what would we call that a little binding piece I don't know that looks about halfway good enough and glue the side Fabri-Tac will give you a minute or two to slide things around so you can make sure they're as even as you want them. There we go. And then that's it. It's all right. Yeah. So then I'm going to take these and fit as many as I can into my little binder here hopefully I can get 10 that's my goal is to get 10 I have 20 of these pages I've been working on and then I'll do something else with the other 10 so I'm gonna finish this up and you know you could decorate these if you wanted to I am not really inspired to do that they're just functional for me but yeah you can do what you want with that there. Oh, this one kind of sticks out. I don't know if I'm going to want those sticky outy ones. We'll see. If I don't, I've got some other pages I can stick in here that don't stick out like that. Yeah, I'll figure that out later. Anyway, I'm going to finish these and then I will flip through and show you the whole finished thing. All done, y'all, and it worked. I got 10 pages in here like I wanted to. I did pull out those ones that uh, stuck out past the covers a little bit and just replaced them with ones that fit better because I did want 
I want this to be tidy on the outside. I didn't want anything sticking out. So I'll show you the pages now. I put this page in the front to kind of show that it, you know, came from a Houston area phone book. And uh, this was, I think I did this one on a cereal bag. Remember when we were fusing cereal bags together and doing stuff? I've seen a couple of videos recently doing that, so I don't know if that's kind of coming back and becoming a thing again. I'm, I'm not sure, but anyway, that's what that was. And then these all have a lot of paint and weirdness on them. Um, this is from PM Artist Studio, and it's just on a, a that was a gel plate uh, background. I think it's a mixture of acrylic and alcohol inks. And then this is just a bunch of weirdness. See this page up here I pulled out of a spiral bound sketchbook or something. And I left the little tabbies because I like that. <laughs> These were napkins and then just weird paintiness. And I don't remember whose stencil image that is. If I think of it, I'll put a link for it. Um, I think those butterflies are a colorful life designs. And then I've I put them on there for no reason, and they were white. I used some uh, gelatos to kind of color them and add some blue so that the butterfly would make more sense. And this is my stencil image from a Colorful Life Designs, and that's also from the same company. This was um, random cutout pieces. It looks like I punched circles out of something and put the uh, leftovers there. Paper napkin. This one. <laughs> These two were in a bin that needed to be filed away. You know, images I've collected that need to be put away in their proper categories. And it went perfect on this background, and I like the two together, so I stuck them down. And then after I stuck them down, I looked closely at the image, and that poor little girl is crying. Like, that's a sad image. She's just filling that heart with huge tears, and I'm pretty sure that she does not feel connected to the people in the world around her. <laughs> so, whoops. No, that's okay. It's pretty to look at, and that was my goal. And, okay, can you see Can you see the glue boogers here? You know, it happens. Despite my best efforts, those are Fabri-Tac glue boogers. And I've shown this before, but I'll show it again. This is what I use to remove those glue boogers. And I have a... They're in my Amazon shop. I can't even think of what it's called, but I call it the debuggerer because I like saying that. And it works really well on Fabri-Tac and these type of silicone-based glues if you, uh, you know, get it where it's not supposed to be. You just rub it with this weird rubbery thing, and then it takes it completely off. Like magic. And then this gets super gross after a while but you can clean it off. I'll show you at the end how to clean it if you're weird and compulsive like that and you just really want to clean it. You don't have to. You can just kind of pick off the little black glue boogery things, but I like to get in there and really clean it. You can probably file that away with, um, you know, my paper ironing. <laughs> totally unnecessary, but oddly satisfying for me. Okay. Um, yep random image that fit on the page so I stuck it down. This was a paper napkin and another napkin and this was the background was just different random mostly gel prints and it was like really busy and loud and nothing really went together and I thought all right I need something kind of subtle to put on top because that background is overwhelming but then I found this picture which is not subtle it's kind of almost as chaotic as the background and I loved it. I just laid it down there and it, it felt like it was happy there so I stuck it down. 
I used some gelatos around the edge. Yeah, I really like the way that looked. So sometimes you don't have to worry about balancing the chaotic with something simple. Just you know, <laughs> go completely all in. <laughs> um, this was a stencil that I put, you know, modeling paste through and then colored with some watercolors. And um, that background, that might be a colorful life design. So I'm not sure. This stencil, I don't even know the company. This was like back when, early days when all you could get was wall stencils, you know? <laughs> like that's where that was from. And these are some napkins that I had treated with Yes Paste, which made them kind of transparent and fun. And I did that on both sides, so you can still see the foam book through the napkin. And another napkin. I was clearly in a napkin phase then. This is a Colorful Life Design stencil that I put some modeling paste through it, and then watercolor, and then this gold paint pen. That was just fun. And uh, stencils on a uh, gel print background and then I don't even remember what was going on in this background but I, I took my toothbrush and <laughs> put some I can't remember gesso or white paint or something over it and then found a, a phrase that just doesn't go at all with the bird but it fit in that spot so I used it and some gel prints and these two silhouettes. So that is my um, book. I don't know what to call it, but yeah, I enjoyed making this. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna think up something else for these. These are the ten other ones that I have left, and some of them still need a little something on their height. Yeah, see that that needs something. That just not doing it for me. So I'll figure something out for these later. Um, but I'll show you what to do if you have one of these things. Let's zoom in. Yeah, it gets gross. This is just how it gets when you use the glue thing. See, these sides are kind of clean. It's because I cleaned them because I do this occasionally. And like I said, you don't have to do this. But if you have a good sturdy nail file or a metal file, which I mean, you can get these pretty cheap, um, you have a local Harbor Freight store, they have them there, or I think Amazon has them. And then I just take it and kind of do this. And it, see, see how satisfying that is? I know you really can't see the satisfaction that I'm getting from this, but just trust me, it is. Because then all of the icky stuff kind of comes to the top. I don't think my camera is enjoying trying to focus in, but you get the idea, right? I just keep scraping at it until it just gums up into this big blob that I can just pull off like that. And then, of course, I would keep going, but I think that you get the idea, because I can just sit here for an hour and do this. But yeah, these this thing, I've had this one for a good, I don't know, 10 years. So they last a long time. And even, you know, with the filing away parts of it, you're going to get your money's worth, and I think they're pretty cheap, actually. And they don't work on all glues and all papers. You have to kind of be careful because you can rip your paper trying to get the glue off. Like um, Mod Podge type glues, PVAs, it doesn't work too good on, but your clear silicone-based glues like Beacon 3-in-1 or Fabri-Tac, um, yeah, works well on those. So there's that little tip. And... That's all I got, y'all. The end. This one has a little bit of, uh, this is where you can see from the, closed door means on Are air. Are you filming? Damn it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm hungry. Well, let me finish and I'll deal with you. 
shoot, what was I saying? Okay. This page I put in the front because this was these pages were from a Houston phone book. I think it was Sugarland actually. I don't remember. How long it was Oh be? my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Give me give me 15 minutes. God. It'll go a lot quicker if you quit interrupting. <sighs> oh, what was I saying? Something about the phone book. Okay. <clears throat> I just know he's going to open the door again. <laughs> okay. So that you can get a good look at how disgusting this gets. Okay, first he opens the door, and now he's got the TV. Okay, he just realized he had the TV turned up, and he muted it. I swear. Sometimes he's lucky I let him live. Okay. Uh, okay, that was not the um, zoom in button. Where is it? There it is. <laughs>